What's up, everybody? This is The Run with your host, Manny Wilson, who always brings the best topics in sports. So today I'm going to start with, I think the Eastern Conference is now going to be much more interesting in terms of competition. So besides the East being fairly weak these last few years, everyone and their mama knew LeBron was coming out the East with ease. So it finally seems that we're not going to be able to predict who's coming out the Eastern Conference, at least for the next five years, now that LeBron has left. So however, I beg to differ. I have a prediction. I think the Boston Celtics will be that dominant force in the Eastern Conference. I strongly believe this. So this is why. This is a team that had five players to average 12 plus points in the playoffs. Out of the five players, two of those players are not Gordon Haywood or Kyrie Irving, which are the team star players. So that's pretty impressive to me. In the regular season, it was seven players averaging 10 plus points. And that was including Kyrie Irving, but no Gordon Hayward. And the team has a lot of young talent, and they are developing quite fast. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Tony Rozier, Marcus Smart, they're all good players. And last, this is a team full of young players and an old veteran player, and they went to the conference finals. They lost against LeBron James. He's been there for the last eight years. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a huge case on that. But this is they 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 didn't even have their star players. They were missing two of their star players. They were the big time players that the Celtics brought in and were expecting drastic change. But instead, they had to play without them, and they still got to the conference final. Now I understand that some people may disagree with me, and they they think, oh well, Philly Philly is good. They're gonna be that dominant force, or or Milwaukee. They they got Giannis. He's really good. They they're gonna be back out of. They're gonna be in and out of the finals these next few years. Now I would agree with you. See, the Bucks did lose in the first round, as I recall. Correct. They lost to the Boston Celtics without Gordon Hayward and without Kyrie Irving. Last time I checked, they did. In Philly, they also played the Boston Celtics in the playoffs, as I recall. And they lost to the Celtics without Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. So, I I can see where you want to debate about Philly winning or maybe Milwaukee winning. But Philly definitely didn't have any kind of excuse because they were completely healthy. And the Bucs were healthy as well. I I see no excuse when... I see them losing to a team with young players and a veteran player. Now, some of you may say, some of you may say, you're forgetting about Toronto, man. Toronto, they got a really good team. Oh, but the Pacers is good, too. What about the Washington Wizards, man? They good, too. All right, now let me shut all of this down before you keep screaming this blah, blah, blah. So the baby dinosaurs first, a.k.a. the Toronto Raptors, a.k.a. the baby lizards. So this organization is not a winning franchise. I don't care what anybody says. They fired the coach of the year. They traded their star player for somebody who don't even want to be there right now. They're basically forcing him to play. He just has to play so he can show that he still can play. I'm talking about Kawhi Leonard, just just so you guys know. And also, this is a team that's been swept out of the playoffs Three times in the last four years. I don't want to hear that they beat the Celtics. This team is straight trash to me. I don't care who they have, whatever. The Baby Lizards are not beating the Celtics, period. Okay, now the Washington Wizards. Here you go with the Washington Wizards. Man, they got John Wall. They know what they're doing. They just got Dwight Howard. They on to come up. Okay, let me shut this down too. So the Wizards still don't even know if they better with or without John Wall. And also, this was an AC team. This was the last team sitting at a fat number eight. And also, the Washington Wizards, as I remember, they did get put out in the first round. They got put out in the first round last year. They got some developing to do before they can even compete with the Celtics. Now, the Indiana Pacers. My man is Victor Oladipo. I'm a huge fan. So, they actually have a pretty good shot with the players they have. But they do need more depth. They need more depth. I would say out of these teams I selected, they are one of the teams who could give the Celtics a good run. They play aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. They play hard. They play physical. And they hustle. But that's only if everybody on that team stays healthy. They did just lose a great role player, Lance Stevenson. They also lost in the first round. I don't think they should have lost. I thought it was some bad calls throughout that whole series. But 
Unfortunately, they did lose in the first round, but they played good. So long story short, if any team in the East really wants to beat the Celtics right now, I'm, I got the Celtics sitting at top dog in the East right now. The Celtics are looking good. They got a great roster. They got great players. They got a good coach. They are sitting top dog, in my opinion. So if anybody is going to beat them, they have to get better personnel. They have to get a better game plan, play hard and physical, and get depth for their team. And they will be okay. Then I could probably think, okay, they can give the Celtics a run for their money, or they might even be able to beat the Celtics and get to the finals and lose to the Warriors like just about any team on the East is going to do. But that's a whole other conversation. But Philly, if they want to beat the Celtics, they got to get more personnel. I think they need more depth. They need a better bench. They need. They just need more players that have more depth because the Celtics are stacked. They are stacked. Absolutely. All right, to switch gears. So the Patriots wide receiver, Julian Edelman, he has a four-game suspension for violating the NFL's policy on performance-enhancing substances. So reporters around the league during, you know, this is a great time because it's toward camp time for a lot of NFL teams. So they asked Tom Brady about this, and the reporter, he asked him, like, what are your thoughts on Julian Edelman and the trainer who people were, like, trying to tie tie clues to to see if the trainer Alex Guerrero gave Julian Edelman these performance-enhancing substances. So when he asked him about that, Tom Brady responded, I have no comment. That's just ridiculous. I'm out. See you guys. And then he grabbed his helmet and left, I guess, went to go practice. So the question around around is, was Tom Brady wrong or was he right for doing this? I feel like he had no wrong in doing this. Now, think about this, man. Now, we all know that these reporters can get a little crazy and they can get, you know, out of pocket sometimes and they ask a lot of dumb things. I mean, when when reporters have full clips on YouTube about the dumb questions they ask, that tells me that, that somebody's not doing their job to the best of their ability. So I'm not mad at Tom Brady. I, I don't blame him at all because if he responds, reporters and journalists are going to write about, oh, well, maybe... Tom Brady is taking these performance enhancing substances as well. Or maybe Tom Brady inspired him to do this. Or, you know, it's no telling what kind of twist these journalists and reporters may put on top of Tom Brady's answer. So him just saying I have no comment is just ridiculous. (laughs) And leaving the interview, I don't have a problem with that. Look what they did to Marshawn Lynch when he decided not to answer a question. I mean, they tried to just tear the guy down. I was like, man, I mean, no matter what he did, it was like the NFL was just swinging him a fine. He said, I- I'm here so I won't get fined. He got fined. It was like, what? how can he win? Jeez. And look at Cam Newton after he lost that Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, he was a little moody, but what do you expect? The man just lost a Super Bowl. As a kid, that's what you dream of as an NFL player. You want to go to the Super Bowl, and then when a reporter or, or a journalist asks something crazy like that, and you expect them not to not to explode or not to have some kind of attitude-type answer, they're still human beings. They, they can get upset sometimes. They play one of the most aggressive sports in the U.S. So I don't understand how, how you could be upset about Tom Brady's answer. I think he handled it quite well. I think he qu- handled it quite well. Sometimes the best answer is to say nothing at all. And, yeah, he added a little bit extra by saying that's just ridiculous. I'm out. He added a little bit extra, but he still held his tongue if he had anything to say. Or he might have not said anything because he didn't want his name tied up into more of the rumors that's going around or more of the rumors that possibly could spread around the league. So I have no fault with Tom Brady. I think he handled that situation really good. Now, because the Patriots will be playing without Julian Edelman, the question, of course, is always there. Will they still be okay during the first four games? My question, my answer to that is definitely a yes. I've seen Tom Brady turn people I've never heard of into and look. I made I seen them make people look like stars, man. It's just ridiculous. 
It is so ridiculous. Like people I've I never heard of until last year. It's like almost every year I, it's a new guy. It's almost like every year it's a new guy that I see on the Patriots. And it's like, man, when did that receiver get there? When did this dude get there? Who is he? Why is he making all these catches? Oh, man, that was a great catch. I never knew who Chris Hogan was. He's a receiver for the Patriots. I never knew who he was before last year. I swear to you, I did not know who he was. I didn't know who Danny Amendola was. Amandela, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but I, I never knew who he was. And then last year, I seen these guys catch a lot of passes. So I definitely think they're going to be all right. It's, it's nothing to, like, panic about if if you rock with the Patriots. If you have any kind of ball skills and, and a bit of athleticism, Tom Brady will make you look great. I feel like Tom Brady will make you look really good. Whether it's a short pass, long pass, if it's a long pass, you're really going to look good because Tom Brady can put it right. He can put it right in your left pocket if he wants to. So <laughs> Tom Brady is great, man. I don't think that's going to have a big toll on the Patriots, especially because it's the first four games. And knowing the Patriots, man, it it doesn't matter. This team is always in the playoffs. They're in the AFC, which I don't think is that good as of now. I don't think they're, you know, I, I don't really see – too many teams that can challenge the Patriots right now in the AFC besides like the Pittsburgh Steelers and you know Jacksonville Jaguars but other than those two teams it's not too many teams that come up on the top of my mind about who can stop Brady most of the time when I think what team is going to beat Brady I'm thinking NFC I'm definitely going with NFC um, I'm not sure which team from the NFC is, is going to win. Hopefully, my team, the Falcons, man. I'm really hoping the Falcons go there. And I know some of the people who, who know me, they're looking or probably going like, oh, man, this guy, he's starting again with these Falcons. But I swear to you, look at the roster, man. Everybody's been clicking. I follow these. I follow the Falcons on Twitter, by the way. So I see, like, everything they, that they update within the mini camp and the training I see it all, so I'm, like, really excited. So I can't help but to talk about the Falcons right now. But, man, Julio's back now. I'm good. We got a new rookie who came from Alabama who's great. We still, man, we got Mohamed Sanu. We got a pretty good receiving core, and we still got Devontae Freeman. I'm telling you, the year we went to the Super Bowl, because I know some people are saying this right now. I know people are are talking about it. Yeah, so what, 28-3. I don't care about that, man. I, it was something going on with it was some strings pulled or something. I'm sticking to it. I don't care what anybody else has to say. I'm sticking to that argument that it was some kind of strings pulled within that game. It's just no way. It's just no way. The Falcons had the number one offense all season. We dominated every. T- we dominate. I watched so many games that season where we just looked unstoppable. And even the first half of that Super Bowl, we looked unstoppable. And then all of a sudden, just a disaster. Like, no, it it was definitely something going on behind the scenes. I don't care whether you agree with me. I hope some people do agree with me. Hopefully it might have happened to one of your teams you was going for against the Patriots because we know that Patriot magic just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it happens. I guess you could call it Brady magic, uh, Brady magic, uh, Belichick magic. I don't know whatever you want to call it, man. But I just know that was just complete craziness. So to end the show today... I just want to go ahead and and talk about these off-court actions. I want to talk about these off-court actions. So LeBron, he just recently opened his I Promise Elementary School in Akron, Ohio for at-risk children. This is a huge way for him to use his platform to inspire others who have the money to do what he is doing right now and just give back to the community as well. So his I Promise School provides free tuition, free uniforms, free bike a, a helmet to go along with the bike, free transportation within two miles, free breakfast, lunch, and snacks, food pantry for families, GEDs and job placement services for parents, guaranteed tuition for the University of Akron for every student who graduates. I have nothing respect for LeBron. If you are someone out there who just completely dislike LeBron, I really don't know what to tell you. I don't know how you can be upset with a man who is doing all of this for the community. And this is not a start. He's been doing things for the community for a long time, even when he was in South Beach, when he was in Cleveland. 
He's been doing it for a long time, and I'm sure he's going to do a few things for L.A. I don't know what that is yet, but this is nothing but pure greatness, and this is a prime example of how you can use your platform to become better, and I really see LeBron James just striving for greatness. So I just want to leave you guys with this great inspiration that LeBron has given to all of us. Thank you for tuning in to The Run with your host, Manny Wilson. Be sure to find me on Twitter at underscore Manny30 to follow the latest sports updates as well as the newest episodes of The Run. You guys have a great day today.